go to Dan, Tiffany, Gary, and Jesse in a moment, but I just want to read this little blurb. Robot warriors will get a guide to ethics. When and what to fire will be part of hardware and software package. Now we showed you the big dog. We showed you the robo fish. Here it is, the little uh, like rolling tank of death. <laughs> Smart missiles, rolling robots, and flying drones currently controlled by humans are being used on the battlefield more every day. See, this is the reality of the situation. How far are we away from the Terminator scenario when we have cyber penguins swimming around? Bring up the cyber penguin video. Do it. I'm going to read this article. I want people to see cyber penguins as I do so. Oh, man. But what happens when humans are taken out of the loop and robots are left to make decisions? In other words... Artificial intelligence, AI, something we cover on here um, quite extensively. Like who to kill or what to bomb on their own. Ronald Arkin, a professor of computer science at Georgia Tech, is in the first stages of developing an ethical governor, a package of software and hardware that tells robots when and what to fire on. His book on the subject, Governing Lethal Behavior in Autonomous Robots, comes out this month. Now, remember, they're going to program these things to shoot you. Let me repeat that. They're going to program them to shoot you. Do we got the video yet of the flying penguin? I, I know. I want the cyber penguin, Jaron. No, not the Pittsburgh penguins. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, he argues not only can robots be programmed to behave more ethically on the battlefield, they actually can respond better than human soldiers. See, they're replacing the military with robots. Ultimately, these systems could have more information to make wiser decisions than a human could make. Some robots are already stronger, faster, and smarter than humans. We want to do better than people to ultimately save more lives. Lethal military robots are currently deployed in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Let me repeat that. Lethal military robots are currently deployed in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. There's the cyber penguin, folks. Look at that thing. How crazy is that? Hooge, on a, on a level of 1 to 10, how crazy is that cyber penguin? 12. That's a 12. <laughs> From 1 to 10, that's a 12. Folks, you know, you, you have to get the PrisonPlanet.tv memberships so you can actually see the insanity as I talk about it, I want that up as I, I read the entire article because I think that they show the endoskeleton. Don't show my ugly mug. Show that. Show that. Uh, no, no. Go back to that video. The video was perfect, man. You had the video up. Go back to the video. Bring it in like a minute or so in like you had it. The thing is, the, it, it's amazing. <sighs> so, so for a third time, let me read it for you. Lethal military robots are currently deployed in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Ground-based robots like iRobot Swords or uh, KinQ's Mars Robot are armed with weapons to shoot insurgents, appendages to disarm bombs, and surveillance equipment to search buildings. Flying drones can fire at insurgents on the ground. Patriot missile batteries can detect incoming missiles and send up other missiles to intercept and destroy them. No matter where the robots are deployed, however, there is always a human involved in the decision-making, directing where a robot should fly and what munitions the robot should use if it encounters resistance. Look at that thing. Look at its internal skeleton. Can anybody say Terminator? I mean, <laughs> just wild, just total wildness. And Festo, they have a... Uh, the penguin's not the only thing they got. They got a stingray on top of it. I mean, this is the future. It's actually right now. It's the present. It's very scary and very worrisome. And we need an open discussion. Uh-oh, Jason Burmis is anti-technology. And he's alternative media. He's twice the terrorist most people are. We'll be back taking your calls. Dan, Tiffany, Gary, Jesse, and John, 866-582-9933. All right, folks, we are back. We're going to go straight to your calls. Dan in Florida, you're on the line. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got him? Yeah, I just wanted to um, offer up some tactics for the info war. Sure. Well, not too long ago, I called this. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but um, Todd Schnitt, he has his, um, his own show. Um, no, I can't say that I am. Well, he's basically just like a total mockingbird, total... 
um, idiot kind of character, but I was talking to him about um, the swine flu, and I was like, yeah, well, we got poisons in our food and in our water and all that stuff, so I don't think that uh, swine flu is the number one thing we should be worried about. Mm-hmm. And he tried to say that uh, that there is no poisons and chemtrails are just condensation, but then he asked me at the end, he, he asked me, he's like, okay, so you do you believe we land on the moon? And um, I'm like, yeah. And um, he's like, what about Building 7? And he didn't ask me anything about it. I just mm-hmm. He just asked me what about it. And I'm like, oh, it's a controlled demolition. And then he hung up on me. Then I realized, I was like, he was talking about that for like an hour later. Mm-hmm. And most of the people that called up, they were just agreeing with him. But if you can call on the radio station, basically hijack it, you know, through through words, you can, um, you can change the subject and you can get people to at least hear the terms like Building 7, which, you know, a while ago they would never even mention on the radio. Mm-hmm. They'd say mm-hmm. you're crazy for bringing it up, but now they're bringing it up. Mm-hmm. So basically just I want people to start to call more, call these radio stations as much as they can. Whenever they don't have anything to do, just call them on the Internet, you know, just post whatever you can, get it as many, um, as many you know, target words out there. Let them know that, you know, we're not going away because I'm seeing more and more Infowars stickers and more and more Ron Paul, more and more alternative stuff. And... I can really see the difference. No, I agree. And, you know, we are having a massive effect. That YouTube thing really let people know, hey, you know, we lawyered up. We had a lot of people call. We got reinstated. We can have an effect. You know, this is why we make these films, so that you can copy them and hand them out to people. So that Building 7 is a buzzword. Whether or not the guy hung up on you, he stayed on the subject. And people go, Building 7, what's that? If you see Building 7 coming down and you can't understand that that's a controlled demolition, you're more retarded than me for not knowing the word tedious. All right, let's go to Tiffany in Vegas. Tiffany, you're on the line. Hey, what's up? How are you? Good. Hey, um, calling about the vaccine. Um... I've been just getting into this lately. My husband actually died about five hours after receiving, he got both the flu and pneumonia vaccine back in January, 42-year-old guy. Yeah, so um, I, we're not sure if it was, they've told us several different reasons why, but I think that that's like the major thing, uh, mm-hmm. contributing factor, because nothing else was going on. They were like, he's medically stable, he's medically stable. They were getting ready to release him. Last thing they did was give him a flu shot, and he's dead five hours later. So, my God, um, what a nightmare! It's it's a total nightmare. And, you know, I had already tried calling in, and then I heard you were speaking with that guy Seal. I was wondering even too, like what, like you know, I was like, ask him why, you know, what was wrong with his friend? Why his friend died too? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if he was older. And back to the vaccine, I've just been kind of delving you know, into, you know, okay, how can we say no to the vaccine? What are going to be, you know, what recourse do we have? And, Mm -hmm. you know, looking at some of the things. And um, I've been looking at a lot of the documents where they're saying, like, I think between the world, the the health organization, and then Mm -hmm. our state's um, Department of Health working with uh, DHS and Homeland, Mm -hmm. they have a... Hold over, Tiffany. Yeah, yeah, hold over, Tiffany. We'll talk about it more on the other side. Right now, there's an article all about the WHO swine flu vaccination over at the InfoWarrior.com. Tons of documentation. Please go check it out. It's the InfoWarrior with Jason Burmis. Back after this, taking your calls. PrisonPlanet.tv, InfoWars.com.